Um, welcome everyone to this Bold Essentials webinar. Uh, we will show 10 must know tips for seamless integration. Um, today's presenter is Jim Dumont, our applications specialist. Um, and you will be granted a uh, microphone and camera access in case you want to participate, or if not, you can ask a question on the left hand side. Um, we will be sending the on demand recording after the webinar, and we will also be posted it on our YouTube channel. Um, so, yeah, uh, without further ado, I'll pass it on to Jim. Thanks, Juliana. Good afternoon, everyone. I know we're all. Um, press for time, so I don't want to take any more time than necessary. We have about 30 minutes to go over the, the content in this webinar. And I wanted to really focus on like, really the Vault Basics. I don't want to just get into the Vault Professional because a lot of users are on Vault Basic and they're making that move to Vault Professional. So I didn't want to talk about those workflows. I also do not want to bore you with PowerPoint. So some of the topics we're going to go over, share my screen over here, <clears throat> some of the Again, some of the 10 best things for working with Vault, Inventor, and AutoCAD. And really what Vault should be doing is should be increasing your productivity. It should not be hindering it, adding additional workflows. Vault Professional is a little different. We get into more file management. There are a few other things that we do. But Vault Basic should really augment the system, be it Inventor or AutoCAD, to really help the way that you work. So I'm going to get into this right away. The first thing I want to just look at is a check in and check out. And with that, I have an assembly file. And right now, looking at my system, you have no way of knowing is it part of Vault or not. We do have the Vault browser. And I'm not a huge fan of going back and forth. And if I look at this, you see this little plus symbols that lets me know and you know <clears throat> these files are not part of the Vault system yet. You've created them, you save them. I'm going to copy them from a network drive over to my local workspace. I open them up and I'm ready to check them in. However, the other thing that we might have are drawing files, DWGs, IDWs, maybe some IPNs, whatever it might be. When I check this file in, I want to check everything in. So we have really quick workflows for this. You don't have to open up each drawing file and check them in individually. I always like to focus on the top level file. To me, this is this assembly file. And I'm simply going to right click, check it in. Now, this is going to check in all of its direct dependents, right? You can see the content center components and the regular part files. But what about the drawings and the IPNs? Over here, we have this little icon that's going to scan for other related documents. So, right now, I'm checking in 15 documents. If I click here, it's going to scan to find any other related documents. It found the associated drawing files. It's now up to 18 files. So it's actually bringing in the drawing files. So I'm doing this with one click right from the assembly file, and everything is getting checked in. But to get files into the Vault system that have never been in there before, it's just a matter of getting the files to your local workspace, opening them up, and then checking them in. And again, that little scan configuration is very useful for getting all those other necessary files. The other thing I want to talk about, I'm going to close this file. I like working with two monitors. I can't do that with the presentation today, so I'm going to work with a single monitor. I like working with the Vault client, and I'll navigate here. And we call this Open from Vault. So in here, I can search on anything. This is my quick search, which is one of the other top things. I know the file in here is called Arbipress. I don't rem remember exactly where I saved it because maybe uh, look at some of the, maybe Pat, uh, he's, he's on our session today. Maybe Pat, um, we're working together and he checked this file in. I don't know exactly where he checked it in, but I know he did. And I know it's available so I can search on it. And when I do that, it gives me a nice list. And when I search in this little area right here, it's searching everything, not just the file name, not just the folder. It's searching any metadata that's associated, could be description, title, whatever might be available to me. Then from here, I'm just going to right click and open. And at this point, it's going to ask me, do I want to check it out? Yes or no. Um, I'm going to say 
I'll say yes for at this point. I could have said no, and I can check it out later. It really doesn't matter. One of the other aspects of this, the reason this seamless integration is, is most of the time when you're opening a file, whether it be an assembly or, or part file, there's typically a drawing file that's associated with it that needs to be updated and modified because maybe we're going to make some changes to this. So instead of going back to Vault, searching for the drawing file, or going back to Vault, here's the assembly. And again, this is some of the other aspects of it um, where used. And there's a drawing file. I have no idea what that is. I want to be able to work smoothly, quickly, productively. So right from Inventor, I'm simply just going to right click on the file and open the drawing from Vault. This is different from open drawing. Open drawing is not Vault related. It comes with Inventor and it simply does one thing. It looks for a file that's the same name as the, as the component, whether it be an assembly or part file, and it's looking for the file in the actual same folder. Open file from Vault is goes to the Vault. It doesn't matter where the file saves or what the name is. It may or may not be the same name as the actual component. Open drawing from Vault. Opens it up. They want to check it out. Sure. Now I can make any necessary changes that I need to, and I'm working more effectively. Now I prefer this method. And I'm going to actually check this in. Sure, why not? I won't be able to. I'm trying to check it in, delete my local copy, but I can't do it because the assembly is open. I'm going to get this little message here, which is okay. So the other method of opening from Vault is you do it from Inventor or you do it from AutoCAD. I'm not a huge fan because it's not as smooth and as clean. I like searching in the Vault client. So I can actually do open. And over here is my open or browse and open from Vault. The interface is a little different. I've got three monitors. Let's see if this where that pops up. There it is here. So it's a little different. I can search, right? I can do things like that. I have a press. It's not bad. I got my little thumbnails over here. It does help. And this does work. But I prefer to do it from the Vault client. I just find it easier, faster. It's on the screen. I don't have to worry about going back and forth on that. So you can do it that way. Or if you go to the Vault ribbon, there's an open right here, which is also open from Vault. And if you're not sure of this, the quick access menu is a great feature inside of Inventor. It's this guy right over here. I can drop this down and I have a shortcut that's a permanent open from Vault. So it'll be right there. So I don't have to switch to a ribbon or a menu. It's just open from Vault. It's the same dialog. When it pops up, I'll be able to navigate, specify the file that I'm looking for, and open it up directly. Questions, comments at all, just you know, feel free. Don't have to wait until the end of the presentation. You can ask away, and then we can stop and um, um, get a little bit deeper into the topic if necessary. All right, so let's go back to here. I'll do a refresh. I can see the file is still checked out. Oh, I'm sorry, I checked it in. It did check in. So doing the refresh, this is another thing that, to me, because we're working in a collaborative environment, most of the people using Vault do. Whenever I go from Inventor, whenever I activate Vault, I will always do a refresh. This is unlike Windows Explorer or File Explorer. That's live. Anytime something happens, if Luke adds a file or Austin adds a file, I'm going to see it instantly. With Vault, it doesn't work like that. When you switch to it, you have it's cached. So you have to refresh it in order to see the latest and the greatest that's in the system. So that's just a, a thing that I do. Whenever I switch out of one application to Vault, I'll do a refresh and the universal refresh is F5. Now I know I'm looking at the latest. Here's my assembly. I right click and open or I can simply double click on it. I will check it out. As I said, Vault should be increasing your productivity. It should not be getting in the way. It should not be adding more 
work to your workflow, it should be seamless. All right, now, this particular file right here, I'm gonna open this. I'm just right-clicking on it, doing an open. I may or may not be sure if there's a drawing file for this. I know I can always do a right-click on it now that you've seen it earlier, and I can open drawing from vault. When you get into Vault Professional, you might want to get into management of this file, rev control, lifecycle states. So what's nice is that, let me talk about the Vault browser first before I get into this topic. Again, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of going back and forth. I always joke with all my customers that I'm lazy. I like all the information at my fingertips. Again, I want to be able to see what's going on without having to do too many picks and clicks. So this Vault browser, this is a panel. The panel can be dragged out. And what I like to do is you can put it on the other side of the monitor. You can put it on a separate monitor. I only have the one screen when I typically demonstrate a work in Inventor. I'll take it and I'll put it and I'll dock it in the bottom. So now it's integrated. So I have my model browser up top and my vault browser down below. So once I'm in here, I can right click on this and I can go right to the vault folder. I don't have to go to vault do a where use or uses, try to navigate it. If I'm in Inventor, I simply right click, go to Vault folder, and it brings me right to the file. Once I'm in the file, I can look at it, what it uses, nothing. Where is it used? I can see that it's used, oh, this assembly, this assembly, and this drawing file. <clears throat> so this particular part file is used in two locations. So that's one of the other, Benefits, true benefits of Vault is you have the users and the where use. You understand the impact. Before you make a change to any part file, you need to know this kind of information. Where is it used? It could be used in 10 different assemblies. This might be used in an assembly that was released a year ago. You need to know that before you make any changes to it. So at this point, <clears throat> this looks good. I can see that it's used over there. And what I'll do is simply just open the drawing from Vault. I could do it from the Vault browser, and I can do it from the model browser. It doesn't really matter. Most of the things that you do can be done in either or browser. So at this point, I have the ability to check it out. I can make changes to it. Um, let's say I was going to move this over here. As soon as I touch it, I'm going to see this integration. Do I want to check it out? Again, I don't have to stop what I'm doing. Do a file. Let's do a checkout before I edit. I just make my edit. The system will prompt me. I'll say, yes, I'm going to check this out. Relatively um, boring part, but I'm just going to do a projected view. And let's just shade it just to add some color to it. Okay, so at this point, we're looking good here. Um, I'm just going to close this file. Something like this may happen. You want to check it in. Maybe you get distracted and you say, no, not a big deal. The file is open. I'm going to close it. And I'm back to the assembly file. And in here in the browser, I do another refresh. I can see the assembly files checked out. Now I am using Vault Professional, so you might see some locks. Let me zoom in over here. These locks just mean that these files are released. These are purchase components. These are content center. And the assembly file is um, it's vaulted. I, I see a little check in there. It lets me know that the file is checked out to me. If it was checked out to someone else, it would have the X in it. So everything here is good. I see a lot of information. But I'm not adding any additional workflow. The only thing that I added was I had to initially check these files in. That's it. Once it's in the vault, you should be gaining all of the advantage from all of the advantages from that point on. All right. So let's go back to this file. As soon as I click on it, it highlights in the model browser and it highlights in the vault browser. Either one of these, I can right click. Uh, I can go to vault. This one uh, is one more mouse click versus right clicking here. I can go right to the vault browser. Once again, I see my uses, nothing, and my where used. This is one of the top five benefits of Vault is the uses and the where used. It's 
such a big deal to understand um, the associations where files are being consumed by your assemblies and your designs and your drawing files. So now I know before I make any changes to this, I have the ability to identify, see it. And then, you know, I forgot about this file right here. All right, it's maybe it's been a while. Let's take a look at it. I'm gonna go to the folder. I don't need to know, I don't need to actually select the file name, come up here and search for it. It's right there. Anytime you see anything, I can right click and I can go to the folder. It's gonna bring me right to the folder in Vaults where this file is and it's gonna highlight it. You'll see me very rarely navigate the folders, start searching. That's how you do it in Windows. That's how you do it in File Explorer. That is not how you do it in Vault. Here's my assembly. And if I do Uses, I can see it right here. So I can go back and forth between File, Child, and Parent just by right-clicking and navigating back and forth. So here is the file right there. Right-click, go to Folder. I used, back to my assemblies. Now, if this press is an assembly that I might be working on for a day or two, maybe a week, um, the last thing I want to do is every time I go to Vault, do a search. This is something I'm going to use frequently. I'm going to create a shortcut. Right-click on it. I'm going to create a shortcut, my shortcut. We're going to talk about the distributed shortcuts later at the end of the presentation. It's going to be my shortcut. And what I love about this is if I close Vault and I manage my shortcuts, I create them when I need them, I get rid of them when I'm done. I'm going to launch Vault over here. Want to be able to work smarter and faster not harder i mean we have this kind of software for us we want to utilize it and take advantage of everything it has to offer okay so it's going to re remember where i was last but maybe i was in a different project but under my shortcuts it'll have everything in here so here's the ava press and it brings me right to that particular file at this point, I can open it to my users where use, and I can just navigate around and do everything like that. All right, so that's the users where used. Okay, now I am going to talk about the rename. This is probably top two big biggest things in workflows. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten support calls where someone inadvertently changed the file name. The uh, assembly references don't update. The drawings don't update. It's a huge problem, and it's been a problem for a very long time. But Vault solves this very, very easily. Now, I'm going to go back to Inventor. I'm going to close this file. I'm going to check it in. And I kind of like this little checkbox right over here. I use this when I, when I consider myself done, and I want to move on to something else. or if I'm going to go to Vault and I'm going to start renaming things, I'm going to redo, I'm going to get into file management, I might check it in, close it, and delete it from my local drive, keep everything clean. All right, so there we go. Do a refresh, as I said. You'll also notice that the drawing file has a circle and the assembly does not. So that's just a, a status indicator to let you know if there's a local copy of that file on your drive in your workspace. When I check the assembly in, I told it to delete the local copy so it's gone. The drawing file is still there, and it really doesn't matter. You don't have to get so fixated on your local workspace. Just open your files. They'll update the local files when necessary. Check out, check in, and just work. You don't have to be so concerned about your local workspace getting flooded with files. Vault will maintain that. If you move a file from one folder to another, not to worry. Again, Vault handles all of that relationships. All right. So let's go back to uses. Now, every screen in here is configurable. You see how I have a thumbnail over here, but I don't have it over here. I'm going to right click on the header, customize view, 
fields and thumbnail. I'm just going to add it. And you can add this to every display that you see. I'll move it up front. This will really help it to start to navigate the system. I'm interested in this file right here. So I'm going to go to the folder. Here it is. And I'm going to do a where used. I can see that it's used in this assembly, this assembly, and this drawing file. The other thing that I see is that the drawing file is actually um, checked out. It's checked out to me. You can see it right here. It's got the little green check. It's checked out to me. Now, Autodesk does do this. It's a little odd. It's It makes the text bold and blue. Some people are colorblind like me. Um, sometimes I'm not actually sure if that's blue or black. But I think it's blue. And it's not really clear. But again, the check is your second identifier. So the file's checked out. The green circle just means that the local copy has changed. It's different from what was in the vault previously. So what I need to do is check that file in. You don't check the file in from Vault. I simply open it. It's not going to prompt me to check it out because Vault already knows that that file is checked out. It's checked out. Looks good. I'm going to check it in. Delete my local copy. Clean. Back to here. Refresh. Now, this file name is incorrect. Because maybe you were working, maybe you're different numbered schemes, let's say with Vault Professional, but maybe using Vault Basic, and you come up with uh, a name and scheme that it's going to be slightly different. So right now, this is probably, again, like I said earlier, probably the number two biggest thing is the renaming. We know that it's used in multiple locations, two assemblies and a drawing file. If I right click and I rename, this is a wizard. Renaming the file couldn't be any easier. I'm going to hit next. Again, I'm, I'm focused on Vault Basic. So instead of being, um, it's going to put new as a prefix. I'm just going to put MTC for microcat dash 003. Finish and close. So all I did was I renamed the part file. That's it. And I know that that part file is used in three different locations. But if I do my where used, it still under, understands that. If I go to this assembly right here, Again, notice that I'm not navigating through the folders. I'm just right clicking. Here's my assembly, uses, it understands the rename file. Go back to it. All right, where used, go to the assembly, uses, everything updates. Here's the new file. It is right. There. Everything updates. <clears throat> the only thing that doesn't match is the drawing file. So if I go back to this file, because I only renamed the part file, not the drawing file, but if I open it, I'm not going to check it out. If I open drawing from Vault, this is the advantage of this command versus the open drawing. It understands. It knows the files involved. It knows that it's a different name. It doesn't matter. It understands it and opens it up properly. I could rename this too if I wanted to, but at this point, I wanted to show you the relationships and just how it works. Vault maintains everything. You don't have to worry or think about it. That's the rename. Okay. Now, let's close this. It's not checked out. It's going to close it. This particular file right here, if I view it, so this was done by SLD and it was drawn in 2023. I'm going to copy this design. I want to create a new part just like this, but I'm going to make a slight change to it. It's a really common practice to start with something you already have and make the changes that are necessary instead of starting from scratch. The thing is, if I copy this file, this needs to be changed to me and to today's date. So what happens now is people will copy the file, 
they might open up the part file, do a save, uh, copy as. They open the drawing file, do a save, copy as. Then open the new drawing file and then replace the model reference. A lot of steps. And I see people doing this that have Vault, Vault Basic and Vault Pro. We have the ability to do a copy design. Now, the good news is starting with 2025, Vault Basic and Vault Professional finally have the same copy design. Vault Basic had a very uh, adequate, um, not very powerful. I'm trying to think of the best word or phrase for it. It was, um, it was not fully robust like the Vault Professional one is, but it is now. So starting with 2025, they're identical. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this file. And I'm going to copy this file, but I'm also going to copy it to another folder at the same time. And under designs, I'm going to create a folder called MTC. I'm going to copy it right there. And what it does, it does a prefix copy of, and I'm going to change this. Now I'm only copy, copying a MTC dash one dash. I'm only copying one part file, but I can do the assembly file. It doesn't really matter. But what I want to do is show you some of the extended functionality. So in Vault Basic, um, prior to 2025, you could do this, but then you'd have to open up the file, check it out, and you have to change the um, the author and the date to be today's date that I'm copying it. When I'm copying this file, I have these rules that I can use, and I created one called MTC change user and date so if i just copy it right now it's going to be a brand new file but the author and the date is still going to be sld in november of 2023 i want that to be j dumont and 72524 just to show you what it looks like the part number is going to get mapped so if i change the name the part number is going to change the category that's well professional i'm not going to talk about that today the author gets mapped to me, to the user, and the date the file get created, it gets mapped and changed to the date that this actually copied. So this is going to do everything for me. And what's nice about this copy design with these rules, it's server-based. So Austin and Luke, Mark and Susan, if you guys have um, Vault Basic or Vault Professional, if anyone makes a rule, we all have access to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to change what I want to control it. And I can also set that as my default rule. I just wanted to show you that this is here. Most people don't realize that. Even with Vault Professional, they are unaware of that, uh, that power that's in there. Now that I have that set, I hit Execute. See that it's successful. We have my MTC. And let's open the drawing file. J Dumont, 72524, my file, today's date. Then I'd go through here, maybe start deleting the rev history because it is a brand new file. I'm just starting with this. And then I'll open up the part file, make some changes. Now I have a brand new part file that started from an existing one. I did it with copy design, <clears throat> top three features of vault and that's why it's in there it's one of that's one of the reasons why people use vault and it doesn't matter if you're in a company that's 50 people or you're all by yourself we all do these workflows we all rename our files we copy design we take anything that might already exist to create something new it's very very powerful now <clears throat> this is great for inventor but we also have the ability to use it for autocad so let's go back to vault we have AutoCAD files, and you can see the description in here. So what's nice about this, if I search on and type today, it's able to search the description. Now that description is actually being extracted from the AutoCAD file. So if I right click on this and I open, I haven't launched AutoCAD yet. So it's going to launch AutoCAD. It's going to open up the file. 
and then prompt me if I want to check it out. Right now it's read only because I have not checked it out. I don't have automatic login, so here it is here. Oh, Pro, there we go. It is, it is on. Okay. So here's my title block, and it is a title block with attributes. That is the key. So everything needs to be an attribute. We can extract that information. We can bring it into Vault, and we can use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this file out. Let's see here. Let's see if it's a checkout and do a refresh. Oh, I just noticed I am using Vault Professional, so excuse me for this. I forgot to. If the file's released, so it's locked, so I can't touch it. But I'm just going to quickly just change the state. Work in progress, because I do want to make a change to it. Vault Professional will manage the revisions, but that's for another webinar for another day. All right, do a refresh. reopen that file now it's checked out over here you can see that it's checked out to it's checked out to me i'm going to make a change to the description oh, this is a multi-line i always forget about that it's a multi-line description and i click the, the uh, little ellipses button over here Okay, so I just added a word into the description. Check this in. Okay. Switch over to Vault. Refresh. It's no longer checked out, and the description updates. So you're able to map any attribute data from the AutoCAD files into Vault, so it's also become searchable. So anyone using the system, uh, Vault Basic or Vault Professional, we have something called the Thin Client. They can search on all of this metadata. So you no longer have to be so focused on file name and folder name. You're able to put the information in um, title blocks that are appropriate, extract all that data, bring it into Vault, and actually make use of it. Okay. So one of the remaining topics is relationships. So for instance, let's go to the Opera Press uses. So let's say that I started this file, <clears throat> I created the assembly. It's all finished, it's all complete, the R&D is done, and we now want to start creating drawings of these. So one of the issues is, what did I leave off, right? So maybe I'm going to hand this over to Austin. So I see his name on top of the list. So Austin, I'm going to pick on you right now. So I'm going to let Austin know that he's got to pick up where I left off. He needs to create the remaining drawing files. The one thing he doesn't know is what files have already been done. So the one thing he does not have to do and now we do have the assembly. We do have the uses. This is great. He's got to go to the Abba Press. Then he's got to go to the folder. Does the Abba Press have a drawing file? Is it used anywhere? Where used? No. Then he's got to go through all the components, right? The collar. No. This is tedious, right? It's better than what we had before, but it's tedious. What we have the ability to do 
is if you go to the Opera Press or any assembly file, let's go over to here and here, uses, we have a bunch of little switches. And one of those is as drawing. So this is a custom field. All I gotta do is customize the view, fields, as drawing. By default, it's not there. So I'm gonna remove it. And it looks like this. So to add it in here, I simply right click on it, customize view, fields, as drawing. It's over here. I can just take it and drag it over here. So I can see that the auto press, the assembly file has a drawing file. I can see that the faceplate has a drawing file. This MTC003 has a drawing file. Um, maybe I want to see description, customize the view, fields. This might help. Let's move this up. So we have the description right here next to it. So I can see the pinion shaft, no detail, RAM, no detail. The table plate does have a drawing file. So I didn't do an awful lot. So Austin has got some work to do. But now he knows. He knows exactly what files needs to have drawing files created and associated with it. So without Vault, so without Vault Basic, and without these little switches, it's very difficult to tell. And the other one is, I think some of you are using iParts and iAssemblies. We've been using those for a while. Those are easily identifiable, whether you use Vault or not. The difficulty now is the model states. So if you look at a particular folder, like this file right here, looking at that file, do you have any idea if that file has, if it's an iPart, iAssembly, or does it have model states? We have all the switches for this. Customize view, fields, files, and has model state. And move it up. So that one does. If I look over here. This uh, is a little interesting. If I look over here at this file, see how it's got the nice little colored circle in there? And if you look at these, they're kind of gray. It almost looks like when I first saw this, like, why did it see that these files have model states? They don't. It's just, it's not colored. It doesn't have it. It has, um, every file has a primary state now, but there's no additional states. If it has additional states other than primary, the little circle will be, will be colored in. It's subtle, but once you know what to look for, it's easy to, it's easy to see. So we have a lot of these little glyphs that help you identify things. And over the years, your vault gets bloated with a lot of data. So a lot of times you might have part files that aren't used anywhere. So one of the other things that we have, let's go back to here. Is have a parent relationship. So instead of going to each file, it's over here. I'll bring this up over here. So we know that these files are being used in assembly. So instead of clicking on every file, let's go over to parts and doing a where used. I just want to identify if the part's being used somewhere. If it's being used somewhere, then I can do a where used. But sometimes you might have a folder that has a lot of parts that aren't being used anywhere. They might be a candidate to be deleted. Get them out of vault. They're just taking up space. We don't want people using them. We want them using other files. So now we know that if they're being used or not. So that could be helpful. And the last thing we have to talk about, this is a Vault Professional feature. A very common question that I get is, you see my screen set up like this, right? I look at my components. I see the thumbnail. I see the name of the file, part number, description, state, revision. I see all this information specifically a certain way. When I click on a file or I click on 
something like this and I do uses, I see the thumbnail, I see the has drawing. This is a now a, um, a configuration that you can save. So if I go to folder like this, you're going to see drawing files, PDFs, TIFFs. These PDFs get automatically generated. But when I'm looking at it, sometimes I just want to see CAD files, nothing else. So I drop this down and I can create a CAD file view. Just show me the CAD files, exclude anything else. These can now be pre-configured distributed views that I can share with anyone in my company. And we do that by defining a custom view. This being distributed, this is new with 2024.2, is that if I create a special page and I create and make it distributed, whenever anyone logs in, they'll have access to these views. Same with the shortcuts, same with the saved um, searches. All of that information can now be distributed to everyone. When I do a, I have some saved searches here, like check out to anyone. So many times if we have to reinstall Vault, and they're like, oh, I lost all my, my saved searches, they gotta redo it. Now they'll be in the system, you simply log in and they'll just come right back dynamically. So checked out to anyone's good save search that other users would like to have. And if I manage my save searches, they can also be distributed or not. That doesn't mean Luke or Mark can't create their own safe searches. Those are yours. As an administrator, I can create them and I can distribute them and make them shared. But you still have control to use your own and make your own. They're just not going to be shared amongst other users. This is a great way for standardizing the display and the grid of Vault so that whenever you go to anyone's computer, everything looks the same. It's very consistent. Again, it's standardization. And that's a big deal in companies that have two or more users. I want to be able to sit in someone's computer and look at the same information I see on my screen. Again, it's all about productivity. Any questions? Um, I don't see any questions at the moment, but I wanted to uh, talk in the meantime. Oh, are you finished? I Yes, I'm wrapping up with this. This is my last one. I was trying to keep it within the 30 minutes. I think I went over just a little bit. And again, I wanted to focus on really mostly bulk professionals. So hopefully I addressed or maybe showed a few new things for some of our experienced users. But if you have any questions, you want more detailed information on anything, you know, feel free to yeah. reach out and we can go from there. Please, and um, remember that we will send the on-demand recording. It's an email. I think it will be go off today. And if you have any questions, you can just reply to that email and we can um, get you set up soon. And we also have, if you want to learn any of these topics in detail, uh, we offer um, constant training at MicroCAD. And we also offer custom training group classes. Um, so yeah. And I wanted also, before I forget, to mention um, an exciting webinar we have on August 8th about the role of AI in manufacturing. Um, that one will be at 1 p.m. Um, so we highly suggest you to check the MicroCAD website for future webinars. And I think, I think that's it also. I don't have anything else that I need to show you guys and also um if you have like an inquiry or something you can also do that through the reply email that we will be sending so yeah i wanted to thank jim that was amazing and remember that we will have this also on our youtube channel posted so that we will that will be there as well in case you lose the email or anything, you can just go to the to our YouTube channel and you will find it there. So I would like to thank again, Jim, and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I wish you all have a great day and rest of your week. Juliana, thank you everyone. I appreciate your time. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.